The original Smittix is Ireland's oldest beer, with brewing dating back to 1710, when founder John Smittix began brewing beer in Kilkenny, Ireland. While first brewed for the Kilkenny Beer Festival that same year, Smittix remains one of the oldest beers in the world. With history behind it, does the premium Irish ale stand up to others in this category? Find out now on Two Dudes Reviews. While Smittix forged its way through the worldwide Great Depression and expanded production even during two world wars, it could not survive globalization as Guinness purchased a brewery in 1965. Subsequently, Guinness is owned by Diageo, a British international alcohol beverage company charged with owning Johnny Walker, Smirnoff, and Hennessy. Despite its new ownership, Smittix has remained true to its original recipe is it worth keeping stocked in your fridge though? Let's find out. Hey guys, Grayson here. Yeah, I got uh, the Sminix Premium Irish Ale hanging out with me right here. And um, let's get cracking. And in case you say it different from me, that's all right. When I was doing research on the beer, there's about a dozen different ways to say it. So, tomato, tomato, I guess. Um, but as I pour this, I also found it interesting that this, along with Guinness, is owned by a British company. So that just kind of seems very un-Irish to be drinking a beer that is owned by a company out of London. But I guess what are you gonna do? Next St. Patrick's Day when you're drinking your Guinness, you're drinking an, uh, an English beer now. But anyways, uh, <laughs> that's beyond the point. Um, let's get into the smell. It's a. Uh, you don't get a lot out of it. It's got kind of a, a creamy aroma to it. I can't even smell anything out my nose. Right. Creamy aroma, maybe a little slight apricot, maybe. But yeah, it is hard to pull any uh, aromas out of this. I'm really not getting anything. I'm gonna have to say creamy, uh, little slight apricot. There's just not much there. Um, because of that, I, uh, I'm gonna give it a half out of one. Um, from what I am getting, it tastes, it smells like it should be uh, pretty decent, but I'm just not getting a lot of aroma out of it. So, all right, let's uh, get into the smell. I mean, let's get into the taste. There is a little bit of a creaminess to it on the top, and it's got almost a bite to it. Not like a, not like an IPA bite, but there's uh, there's something to it that's just really kind of um, it's to your tongue. It just holds on to it, bites down, and you know that's fine. It, and you might think I sound crazy, but there's almost like a like a little bubblegummy flavor at the end of it. It's it's, it's interesting. Um, yeah, it's um It is kind of just like a creamy um a light woodsy um apricot flavor to it. And still, I'm sticking with maybe there's a little uh, vanilla in there too. I'm gonna go with a little vanilla, just a hint. And there's almost, I still think there's almost like a bubblegummy um, aroma or flavor to it. It's something about it that reminds me of just like bubblegum I'd have um, as a kid, whatever. And actually, if you can get this beer in Canada as a, a drop, 
And so um, I could totally see that with this. I think it's already got kind of a creamy head to it. You, um, if you had like some of the nitro infusion into it, I think it really work well with that. Um, I'd actually like to find the uh, nitro infusion somewhere and check that out. But um, taste, like I like it. It's it's a little different. It's not super heavy. It's not super light either. It's a nice medium, and I, I like it. I'm gonna recommend it for that. And so uh, category three is um, value for price. Now I believe I paid about a, uh, like a dollar seventy five for one. Um, so you're gonna be able to probably get a six pack for you know come down a little bit from six seven bucks. That's not not bad at all. If you want a, a, a decent uh, six pack of beer, I mean, alcohol content is um, four and a half percent, so no, not super high and super low. Um, but yeah, it, it's a good, um, it's refreshing. It's uh, the value of price is pretty decent, so I'm gonna recommend it for price wise. And uh, next category is drinkability, and that's kind of you know how many of these can I drink in a row. Um, I actually enjoy it. Even the the flavors are very interesting. There's just there's something there. That I feel like I'm not quite catching, but it's hidden in there somewhere. And eventually, after I have a few more sips of it, I think I'm gonna get down to and figure it out. But it, it's a little more complex than I think just an average, you know, red or um, the yeah, average regular ale. I think it's a little more complex with it, and. Um, I enjoy it. I feel like it's one of those beers that you can just see walking into an old pub in the 1800s and just having a big old you know, fist full of this beer. It just seems like some one of those kind of beers that you can drink. And you can tell that you know they made this beer back in the 1700s. It just has that kind of um, that like the somebody spent time making this up back in the day, and it's kind of you know it's been lingering on since. And I think it really has that kind of. Uh, you know, um, characteristic to it. So I think drinkability is good. I could sit back and just, you know, get a six pack of these and enjoy myself. So I'm gonna recommend it for uh, the drinkability for sure. Um, category five is distinction. And, um, you know, when you're just comparing these to other ales, I think it's got a, it's got a nice little uh, um, characterization to it compared to others. I don't usually get the, uh, the creamy, almost vanilla-y, flavor to it that's I, that's I think a little more unique to this it's got a nice flavor I maybe the lack of smell helps with its the creaminess so you can take more of that in and let uh, your mouth kind of take in the creaminess instead of your, your uh, smell I do kind of wish it had more though um, so that is a little lacking for me with the smell and that's gonna kind of hurt its distinction for me a little bit so I'm gonna give it a half out of out of one but you know it's still it, it's different it's just not it, it's missing some uh, senses to make it all the way and uh, so finally sixth category is would I buy it again and yes I, I think I would it's it's a nice Irish beer it's um, if you just want something you know, it's not super bitter that you can just kind of kick back and drink it and you know, enjoy and just kind of relax after the day without having anything too heavy, but something with a little more flavor than a really light beer or just a wheat beer. Um, I think this is a this is a nice option, and so I would buy it again. And um, I could see this, you know, for St. Patrick's Day or just you know, whenever you just feel like a decent beer and don't want to spend a lot of money. So yeah, I'm gonna recommend it for that. And uh, so yeah, that's not too bad. It's got a five out of six. I'm adding everything up, right? Um, but yeah, either way, it's um, it's a good beer. I, if you haven't had Smittix or however you feel like pronouncing it, um, check it out. It's definitely worth your time. And so for that, if you've had it before, if you have any specific feelings or you know totally hate my review, you just want to talk about the beer, uh, write down in the comments. I'll respond. You know, we can have a nice conversation about the beer. And um, if you like the if you like the video, subscribe, please. Um, we have uh, more videos coming out all the time. We have a few different shows, so you can either just check out the beer reviews or continue your entertainment with everything else we got going on. <laughs> and uh, we also have a podcast at Two Dudes in a Six Pack. You can find that wherever you get your podcast. So check that out. And um, yeah, uh, for myself, for my um, buddy Chris, that we do the podcast together. And cheers.